Good morning, dolls, and welcome to Little Gretchen's Workshop. So let's get going with the dress shop essentials. Now, there are some very specific things that are going to be needed in the dress shop. So let me show you what I did with some pieces that I had that needed to be repaired, enhanced, and upcycled. So dolls, I have these lovely pieces. They are white. They're sort of like a, got enamel paint on them. Now this mirror is really beautiful and I thought it would look great in the dress shop, but it's broken. And I can see exactly where it disconnected, sort of in the joint areas. So I used my Loctite glue and actually applied it to those areas exactly where the mirror disconnected. Now when you do this, dolls, you want to get it in the exact place where it's separated because the fit will be better and you have a better opportunity for it to bond permanently. So I found the exact area where it broke or disconnected and added my Loctite glue and held it there for a few seconds until it's set. Now you're gonna to have to be a little patient because it's gonna take a couple seconds. It's not very long, but it seems like an eternity when you wanna move on to something else. And after it's set, I wanted to kind of prop it up and allow it to finish drying in the position that I had already set it. So I had to use a little ingenuity to set it up to keep it positioned so it will dry properly. So I used a bottle of glue and a small table. So in the midst of the collection of things I had set aside to use in the sewing room and dress shop, I found a couple pairs of scissors, but they were a brassy color as a child, my mother's dressmakers always had big black scissors with silver blades. So I stuck the scissors into a piece of foam board so they would stand up and dry properly while I was working on them. And once the black handles dried, I flipped it over and painted the blades silver. And I used my tester's paint for both pairs of scissors. Although acrylic paint would have worked as well, it just would have given more of a dull finish. Now, if you remember in the original video, I was talking about fixing up this little screen, but I really didn't like it in the white. It didn't look very vintage to me. So I went over it with a coat of the tester's gold and allowed that to dry before I went any further. Now, dolls, I'm still working with the tester's paint and I wanted the legs of this particular mirror to be a shiny black. Now, to be fair, I did one. I have two mirrors that are exactly the same. So one of them I did with the tester's paint so it would be shiny. And then I did another one with the acrylic black. They both work equally as well. The main difference is the testers came out shiny, more of an enamel look. And my folk art acrylic black is more of a matte color. So it looks like wrought iron. So I added a thin coat of that to this white mirror as well as a base. I had had concerns about what I was going to do about my hats. I needed some hat stands. And although I had heard that it was great to use golf tees as hat stands, but I didn't have any golf tees. But I pulled together all the things that I did have that I thought may help me make some great hat stands. So I have these little wooden spools, and although they're wonderful, I have something else I'd like to use them for. So I set them aside. But I pulled out, I have what looks like some really big spindles or wood turnings. And I thought I might be able to cut them down. So I had a hat stand that I had made out of an old lamp and a large bead. And so I figured some of the hat stands would have different heights. So I took the turnings and cut the tips of them off. I didn't actually cut it all the way through. I cut it part the way and broke the tip off. Now I have to sand it because it's pretty rough. I would encourage you to take your time and cut all the way through so that your cut will be smooth and you won't have to do so much sanding. So after I cut it down and held it next to the hat stand that I made from the lamp, I felt like it was a good height. It just needed something to support it. So I had several bead caps laying around that I had pulled out of my bag of what are you keeping that for? And I thought that these would work. I could use one at the bottom, one at the top, and the top one I would rest the big pearl gray bead on. So I decided this was my opportunity to start practicing using smaller amounts of glue on my project. So I added it to the bead cap and then added the turning and allowed it to set. That belongs with the spools, so let me put it aside. And while it dried, I sanded the other turning to see which one of the bead caps would work for it because I was using the other two on that one hat stand 
So I realized I did need to cut the top off of this one as well. And after I cut it, I just broke the rest of it off, dolls. And after I broke it, I sanded it smooth. Now I considered using that same bead cap as the base for this one, but if I used it for this one, I wouldn't have a topper for the first one. So I went on to try to find another bead cap that will be equally as balanced as the first set that I found. So I found some other bead caps, and although they were pretty, they didn't have the proper curvature to fit around the bottom of the bead. So while this one was drying nicely, I went on to find something else. So in the midst of my digging, I found a really cute little button that had a concave top to it. And it really fit the bead really well, but it was flat on the bottom, so I was going to have a problem with that. And then I found another little metal piece that fit really good on the bead and on the top of the spindle. And then I found a little spindle cap. So I thought that that would be really great for a base. So I sanded the base of the spindle to make sure it fit nicely on the top of the little spindle cap. And after I got it nice and smooth and felt like it would fit neatly, I added some glue. Now dolls, I did have to hold it for a couple seconds until the glue began to set up and then I allowed it to dry. Now while that one was drying, I added a small amount of glue to the bead cap of the first hat stand. So while those things are drying, let me show you what I did to these two tables. Now these are from the same set that were like the little scrolly white mirror and they were tables. And I thought that it would be nice if I put mirrored tops on the tables because it would give me larger surfaces to put different things in the dress shop. And that was an idea. I wasn't going to glue them down yet, but these are the ideas that were tumbling through my head. So I just had to try it to see how it would work. I'll definitely need to add some nail art around the edges of those mirrors to make them look finished. But in the meantime, I began to make my mix so that I could paint the little metal tables. Now, the top of the metal table was really slick, so I added a little gesso. Now, the gesso that I like to use is by Liquid Tex. It gives it a little texture, so if you're trying to paint really smooth surfaces, gesso acts as a primer so that your paint will stick. So after adding gesso to both my tables, I went on to create the mix that I wanted the tables to have. So I used a little turquoise, I used some Hunter's Green, and that succulent or mint colored green that I had been using on so many things inside the rooming house. And I also used a little bit of navy blue, trying to get that cool mix of greenish blue, sort of what they call a verde shade. Now dolls, this is not going to be exact. I'm playing around with the colors and the shade. So I'm going to go ahead and allow this to dry before I go on with the next layer. And I decided to use the same treatment on the mirror. Now let's get back to our little hat stands. Now the bases have dried and they're looking really good. They're not toppling over. So that makes me feel good that I balanced them correctly. So now I'm adding a small amount of glue to the top to make sure the part that I add the pearl bead to is stable. And I was just when I thought I was getting comfortable using small amounts of glue, I became uncomfortable again. Sometimes I think I look at glue as insurance to make sure that my project doesn't come apart because that's something that used to plague me a lot as a child. Things fell apart because the glue didn't hold. And I guess I don't have to use so much, but in this case, I felt like filling the bead cap with glue was the best option. And when it came to filling the hole at the top of the big pearl bead, I probably should have used wood putty, but I just used some of the Gorilla Wood glue as well. So here we are back at the little green tables and now the first two layers of paint are dry, the green and the black. I'm adding a copper metallic tone. Now this is acrylic paint, but it does have a metallic look to it. It's actually called Copper Penny by Folk Art. And I'm just splashing it around. I'm not actually trying to coat it. I'm just patting it in different places to give it kind of a random look that maybe the copper was coming through. And after I finished the tables, I went on to use that copper penny to make the same splashes on the mirror as well. And I also leave links to several of the supplies that I use today. So after I finished upcycling the tables and the mirror, 
I turned my attention to the little bird cage. Now I started the bird cage with a black acrylic color, but I didn't like it as black acrylic. So I went over it with my testers gold paint. And while I had my testers gold out, I went on and started to work on the little cash register for the dress shop and highlight some of those details on the cash register that you really wouldn't notice if you didn't put a brighter or lighter color on it. Now, although I did like my little cash register, it was just a little bit too shiny. So I used my black acrylic paint to kind of dull some of the shine of the black enamel color on the little cash register. And after I dulled it down a little bit with the acrylic black, I came back over it and hit some of the highlights with that gold testers paint as well, just to bring out some of the detail. I really like the way this little cash register turned out and I'm really getting excited about setting up the dress shop. I guess it's time to start the renovation now, huh, dolls? <laughs> so now that the gold on the screen was dry, I had to come up with a way to put panels on it so you can't see through it. The dolls are gonna want their privacy when they're changing clothes or trying on the beautiful dresses. So I used some remnant wallpaper and wrapped it around a piece of cardstock. So for the two outer panels, I used the same type of wallpaper. But for the center panel, I used a different one because I wanted it to look a little mm, vintage, hodgepodge, sort of like maybe they had to salvage it and repair it and didn't have the same type of uh, fabric for the middle. And I was a little details like this give a mood and a feeling for your scene. I want it to look like it was renovated and decorated on a budget. So this works. So in the midst of working on the hat stands, I found another one of those little random lamps that I made the first hat stand out of, and I decided to use it as a hat stand as well. These are nice lamps, but I don't particularly like them. They don't look very realistic to me, and I think they'll look a lot better as a hat stand. So I did that lamp the same way I did the first one I made. And then I began to paint the two gold bead caps on the spindle hat stand with the tester's gold. I think the tester's gold paint looks a little bit warmer and richer than the original color of these little plastic bead caps. It just makes it look a little bit more realistic than its original tone. Oh, and in the process, I actually did add wood putty to the hole at the top of that bead. Now, Dolls, I was originally going to paint those uh, gray beads black, but I just got happy with the gold testers paint and went on and painted the bead with that same testers gold paint that I did for the bead caps. So the last thing I had to do, Dolls, was to stain the spindles. So, Dolls, this isn't actually stain. It's actually furniture um, touch-up stain that they give you from the furniture store. But I never used it for that, so I used it to stain these spindles. And it turned out really nice, and it looked great with the warm colors in the gold metallic paint. Now, dolls, we have two more videos in this series before we move on to dressing and making dollhouse dolls. So be patient with me, and stay tuned. And I'm looking forward to seeing you on the next episode of Little Gretchen's Workshop. Bye-bye now, dolls.